Hey everybody, I'm Mark Walters of BigFanboy.com, once again here at the Dallas International Film Festival 2013 edition, and we're talking about Java Heat. I've got Connor Allen, Rob Allen here with me. Thanks for being here, guys, and thanks for bringing this movie to us. It is absolutely us. our pleasure. Yeah, I mean, it was a great kind of opening night, you know, film, and, and, and I'm going to start right off talking about being there last night with that crowd and that audience <laughs> and all the falling beer we glasses <laughs> and everything it was just it was a such a fun we environment we had a very excited crowd yes Hopefully they were. part of that was that they had a heck of a time watching our movie and yeah. part of that was that uh, yeah we were chatting they were already with, having a heck of a time chatting before we started there were there were more broken glasses there than at a jewish wedding it was uh, <laughs> it was uh it was, it was like some scene in a movie where the russian gangsters are throwing glasses in the fireplace or something but they People were having a big time and really being vocal, and they seemed to seem to yeah. like the movie. So. Yeah, yeah, we're getting a lot, a lot of hoot and hollering, action stuff, romantic stuff was coming off well with Kellen, and uh, yeah. yeah, people were digging it. Yeah, very, very cool. Well, and and one of the things we talked about last night on the red carpet was the fact that I mean, I, I love this because I love 1980s buddy cop movies. I love you know like the kind of the sensibilities of like the Walter Hill type film, and this really is evocative of that. And and one of the things I mentioned to Kellen just a minute ago was the last time I can really think of any sort of buddy movie like this that that worked was maybe like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and that was like yeah, seven years ago. ago so we need yeah. these kinds of movies we need like these buddy pictures to come back and this was fun I mean and I know you guys are no stranger to working in Indonesia but uh, making a film like this, this <laughs> in Indonesia yeah that's an interesting yeah. sort of take and kind of taking that classic formula and putting it in that setting yeah. what was Indonesia able to bring to this piece do you think I mean, I, there's a lot of different sort of pools to draw from in that in that regard. Um, I think probably the first one is sort of just an exoticism um, in that uh, it gave us such a such a beautiful location to shoot on. It made, it made for like a very vibrant movie. Mm -hmm. um, the end of the film takes place on Borobudur Temple, which is a UNESCO World Wonder, and uh, just just massive massive Buddhist temple in the middle of nowhere, and uh, gave us what we wanted to do is like a kind of a north by northwest Hitchcockian yeah. ending and we got to pull it off and do it for real on this on this real site it was very difficult to get the permissions involved in that um but we got to shoot you know a cool action movie on top of a temple in the jungle and uh that made for a heck, heck of a heck of a climactic scene so yeah. you know, i think um, i think also in indonesia in addition to being a really beautiful place it's also kind of a land of secrets it's a very mysterious and mystical place yeah. and and so as connor was talking about the exoticism and it, in, in terms of the beauty of it but it's also really different really different from from the united states or different from europe and different from the americas and we wanted the greatest possible difference i, I think those films that you were talking about like Black Rain and Red Heat and, and 48 Hours, they're about a difference between the, the two buddy cop characters. And in this mm -hmm. case, we used that traditional buddy cop formula as a lens to see the difference between America and Islam and between the East and the West and between sort of the developed world and this very mysterious, very ancient uh, city in central Java uh, where there's all these palaces and mosques and subterranean tunnels. And I mean, so the the location really gives you all sorts of ideas as a writer and as uh, it, it, for Connor as a director and, and, and even for the cast. I mean, Mickey, Rourke, and Kellen just soaked up ideas embrace that, from yeah. the yeah. atmosphere Indonesia and then, and then integrated like, the performance. Because nobody really knows anything about it, especially, I mean, in Indonesia they do, but, but here in the States, no one really, it's, it's like, a, as we call it, like a blank slate. And uh, so it gave us just a world of opportunities of things that we can, uh, sort of this world that we can take our audience into. They don't know where Indonesia is on the map. They don't, you know, it, uh, it's, 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 in, it's in Asia, but it's a Muslim country. Yeah. But it's not just Muslim. It's, it's like the United States, it's a melting pot. There's Buddhism, there's Hinduism, there's Christians, um, there's animism there. And so we got to, um, they, have, they have princesses and sultans and sultanas and stuff, and uh, we got to really do so much with that. Uh, it was made for a lot of fun. Yeah, it adds that whole fish out of water element. It uh, it's really, yeah. it really does add a lot to it. It's kind of an untapped resource for American audiences. It's, I think that it's adds funny, so much. It's funny, you know, to it. with the internet and everything, we we can we can have access to everywhere. <laughs> yeah. It's sort of like we know everything about everything and nothing, you know, yeah. uh, because and nothing about anything, because access now to information and 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 even images and photographs are are is so simple that we no longer rely on film to take us on an adventure uh, to 
to a, to a land that we've never seen. And I, I think, uh, you know, there is also so much done with fantasy and, and the supernatural and science fiction and things like that, that, that we no longer look at film as a, as a device to take us to Egypt or India or anything as much as, much as we used to. And, and we wanted to sort of recover the spirit of what Alfred Hitchcock and so many great directors did, uh, John Huston, that took you on these these great world adventures in their yeah. films, and, and obviously we're not we're not a, we're not yet filmmakers on that <laughs> level, may never be, but in our own little way, we wanted to to try to take people to something they hadn't seen before. Yeah, no, I appreciated it a lot, uh, and also we, we talked last night on the carpet about the ca- the process of bringing Kelly and in, Kellen into this, but. Let's talk a little bit about finding Mickey Rourke and, and making that decision, sure. and and um, what's it like working with that well, guy? Well, for, as far as <laughs> as far as finding him and getting him in the movie, two di- two different steps. Right. You know, the first was coming up with the idea of okay, who? Once we had Kellen, yeah, it changed the dynamic of what we wanted in the antagonist. Yeah. Because Kellen is way bigger and more physical than your average actor, and obviously this is an action movie, so we we're going to find somebody big and physical, but I mean, Kellen is above and beyond in that respect. And so to pair him with a bad guy like Ben Kingsley or Michael Keane yeah. or something wouldn't have been fair, you know? Right. It's like, okay, yeah, okay, this young Marine, you know, buffed guy beats up on Ben Kingsley, okay, you know, like, that's not that impressive. Yeah. Mickey Rourke, former, you know, people know him, he got he had his comeback from a wrestler, he's a professional, he used to be a professional boxer, uh, professional tough guy in general. Okay, if you can best this guy, then you're then you're an impressive protagonist. And so once we had Kellen, that's when we decided we wanted to get somebody physical and like right. impressive to go up against him. And Mickey's name came up really early. He was the first guy we went after. Um, him and Kellen had just done Immortals together, and so uh, and Ke- uh, they were doing some press. I think. And Kellen, um, yeah. made, Kellen made sure that he read the script. And nice. once he read the script, he's like, oh, this is, this is pretty cool. And, and Mickey, uh, Mickey thought it was a sh- you know, sort of an interestingly answer. shaded character. He liked the dialogue a lot. And, uh, and the thing about Mickey is Mickey is all about the work. You know, like, tons of people say, oh, my God, working with Mickey Rourke, that must have been difficult. And, and it, it really wasn't. I mean, with Mickey, it's all about the work. He's not, mm-hmm. he's not a prima donna about his trailer or anything I mean, we provide all those things just like we do to, to any star but um but mickey uh he was you know worried about watching deer hunter and like working yeah, on his accent within an hour yeah, of landing exactly. than anything else yeah he got off the plane and said you know we met connor and they, they had a really good meeting together and then uh and then he said oh, i want to get a copy of deer hunter because there's this really cool sort of louche frenchman decadent louche frenchman in that film who was a real life smuggler? He wasn't an actor, yeah. and and uh, Mickey loves Michael Cimino and really really uh, admires the, the films of, uh, of Michael Michael Cimino, and so we uh, we uh, managed to get a copy downloaded somehow. I don't know. We somehow found found a copy in uh, Indonesia, and uh, they sat in the trailer and watched Deer Hunter together, and and started thinking about the character and and how to build that that backstory and I think Mickey was very interested in the whole idea of a sort of search for lost beauty for whatever reasons he could really relate to that and uh, and so he, he you know took it in a completely different direction than than we might have predicted but that's what's wonderful about having a you know world-class Oscar caliber actor like that yeah now what's next for you guys I mean you've already made your trilogy film you know film and then you now you've got the action buddy cop movie what do you want to do now oh uh, we've got we've got more um, movies in the work we've got a historical epic called white Raja that we're working on yeah. um, that I'll let you talk about uh, it's about it's about Sir James Brooke who was uh, a real life uh, English adventure in the 1840s who went to Borneo uh, really just on a lark and uh, and used his ship and his cannons to fight piracy and became king. And he and his white English descendants ruled as kings in the in the jungles of Borneo for a hundred years until wow. a Japanese king. It's really an really interesting story. story. And uh, and uh, so we we've developed uh, a really terrific film about that that we're going to shoot in Southeast Asia. Uh, we've also got uh, Connor's got a really exciting uh, sort of bachelor party gone awry. Uh, action thriller uh, that's uh, that we're uh, gearing up to shoot in Puerto Rico. Nice. And a romantic uh, psychological thriller that I'll let Connor yeah, talk the, about. Yeah, the Bachelor Party one is called uh, Playback, and um, 
it's about uh, these four guys on a bachelor party when they sort of um, they become involved with this young girl who's um, sort of taken from the hotel under uh, sort of questionable circumstances, uh, a la like Natalie Holloway in Aruba, and um, these guys decide that they're not going to just sit back; they're going to go get involved, mm-hmm. and um, then you know things go awry. And then uh, we have a psychological thriller about a couple on their honeymoon in Bali, um, which is back in Indonesia on our home turf. And um, and uh, this this guy's wife goes missing, and he but there's also something wrong with him, and we think you know he may be involved in some way. And um, the that script's called Vanished. And, it's uh, kind it's of fran- frantic website. meets memento or something yeah. like that. Nice. But uh, we're really interested in thrillers and in adventure stories. Uh, uh, not necessarily only action movies, but mostly things that are adventure, intrigue, thriller. That well, you mentioned that Hitchcock earlier in different worlds. Yeah, yeah, we need more films like that. Like yeah, the, Con- the Connor's film Vanished is very, very Hitchcockian, and and uh, where I'm, I'm a huge fan of Hitchcock's work. Like at this John Con. Heat, we like to have we like to have fun with our movies. You know, it's not mm-hmm. just they're not they're not going to be uh, you know high dramas or anything, but um, but we like to we like to go places. We like to take our audiences on a you know, on an adventure, and that's that's whether it's a psychological thriller or an action movie like Job the Heat or whatever. It's we're always going to take our our people on an epic adventure. So, so many people last night at the premiere came up afterwards said that must have been really fun to make, and I thought that's something you really want to achieve with a film is that yeah. at the end of it, you watch and, and the audience almost feels like they were part of making the movie, like mm-hmm. like you, you know they got to go on the adventure with you, and yeah. uh, and I think if we achieve that on on all of our films, we'll be very very happy. All right, well, guys, promise me whatever the next movie is, bring it to Dallas International. Film Festival. Dip premiere. This is our hometown. Let's make it happen. Of course. We'll we'll be here. Here. Connor awesome. and Rob Allen, thank you very much, guys. Java Heat is the movie, and thanks for joining us at Dallas International Film Festival. Keep watching movies. We'll see you later.